We've had some growing indication that sort of a ramping back of demand for EVs, at least in the United States. Uh, we now have this new data point with Tesla. Is it a Tesla problem specifically we saw yesterday or is it a broader issue? Well, David, thanks for having me. And, you know, two things are true at once. Demand for electric vehicles in the United States continues to grow, but at the same time, that demand growth is slowing. I mean, let's not forget, in 2023, there was 50% year-over-year growth in electric vehicle sales uh, in, in the United States. And that led to a spate of stories about how growth was slowing down. That shows how high expectations were. But, but in the last quarter, uh, to answer your question, I think we've seen not just Tesla, but, but other uh, slowdown in, in electric vehicle sales. And I, th I think there are a number of factors we could talk about them. I, th I point to interest rates continue to dampen the market overall for, for new car sales. And, and then with respect to electric vehicles, prices are just too high. The average price for electric vehicle is, is around $50,000. Consumers are looking for lower prices. And then there's concerns about charging infrastructure out there as well. When you think, David, about the adoption curve here, how quickly can demand slow? Because I think it's the rate of change here that many are worried about. Well, demand has so pretty significantly in the past in the past quarter or so. There, there's just a range of projections, and I think it depends upon it, a number of factors. It obviously depends upon interest rates overall. Um, it depends on how quickly new models come out that are at price points that consumers are are more interested in you know a, a number of of the, um, the the a number of the manufacturers including Hyundai uh, Kia and others actually had you know have had some pretty good quarters as they put out some you know cheap, cheaper products in, in in China we're seeing dramatic growth in the electric vehicle market with some very low price models so i, I think it depends upon how manufacturers resp respond in the united states it also depends on how quickly charging infra infrastructure can get out there We'll talk about the charging infrastructure. We had Brian Deese on recently, uh, and he specifically said one of the big gating functions right now for electric vehicles is the lack of charging stations. There is money, I know, in the Inflation Reduction Act to try to buttress that. How big is the problem with the infrastructure to support charging? You know, it's, it's an interesting chicken and egg problem. When you ask electric vehicle owners uh, why they, uh, or potential buyers of electric vehicles, why, uh, why they may be reluctant to buy an EV, they often point to charging infrastructure. But then once they buy the vehicle, they rarely use that public infrastructure. Uh, people usually charge their cars either at home or at the office. Um, and, and it's kind of a cross between a cell phone and a, and a regular conventional vehicle and the way people use it. That's created some business model challenges for, for uh, electric vehicle charging companies. Um, but the Biden administration has been, you know, ambitious and in, in, in really putting out significant funding for electric vehicle charging infrastructure that's starting to roll out. I think this is a type of thing that there, there's a snowball effect. And once there is, once we reach critical mass for electric vehicle charging infrastructure, it's going to make a big difference in the market. Uh, David, you mentioned the price point more than once here. Uh, and as you say, Hyundai actually is having some success in this country at a lower price point. As we know, some of the big three from Detroit made a conscious decision to go in at the higher prices. For example, General Motors with Cadillac. Is it time for them to rethink that strategy? Well, there's a typical way of introducing premium products is to come in at the high end and then, then you know, move down to cheaper parts of the market. I think that's what the big three and, and other car makers are doing. I mean, like I think one of Tesla's problems is Tesla hasn't put out a new model in a in, in number of years. They're still relying on, upon um, uh, models that were out almost five years ago. Uh, they've invested enormous amounts of, uh, of corporate attention and resources in the Cybertruck, which is a very niche product. Um, and their their cheap sedan, which is coming, is still projected to be a few years away. So it's, it's, it's a big issue for Tesla and for the rest of the market. David, I'd love to draw on your government expertise here. You had been at the Department of Energy yourself for a while. When you think about the Biden administration's plans, when it comes to electric vehicles, how important is that for them to step in in this way? And how much can those charging stations stoke demand? I think government plays an important role here. I think we, you know, we've seen in there are really three major markets for electric vehicles right now around the world in, in Europe, um, United States, and China, and we've seen governments playing important roles in in all three of those uh, geographies. Uh, government both has produced has juiced demand with with incentives, but but then also plays a critical role in, in the infrastructure development. 
Uh, David, uh, China uh, has really made a priority of electric vehicles. They've really subsidized, I think it's fair to say, a lot of their operation. We have very low price vehicles from BYD. How big a challenge is that for the United States? Are we going to have uh, anti-dumping proceedings brought? Well, we're seeing Chinese electric vehicles start to move around the world in pretty significant numbers, and it's becoming a, a significant trade issue in, in Europe. The German industry is is very concerned about this. I think this, this absolutely uh, is going to be a real issue going forward. I think there's going to be very strong pressure to protect the U.S. market against the entry of, of, of Chinese vehicles. Well, expand on that a little bit here. How important is it for Tesla, for the other motor companies to really be catching up here for the sake of American competitiveness? Yeah, look, I, I, one thing we've seen in the past couple of years is the reshoring of manufacturing in the United States due to, due to real policy interventions and, and, and some, some really uh, bold moves by the Biden administration. And, and I think American competitiveness is absolutely key here. Um, I grew up in the great state of Michigan, uh, great manufacturing center. It, it, it has been for a century a uh, home of the automotive uh, industry, and I, I think it, it is needs to stay ahead of the curve and is staying ahead of the curve for the, the vehicles of the future.